weight gain, fatigue, injuries, or just age-related decline, many of us are left feeling frustrated for real solutions. But what if there was a way to harness our own body's power, a way to naturally stimulate and increase growth hormone, opening doors for better muscle growth, effective fat loss, improved recovery, and many other anti-aging benefits. Enter CJC1295, a peptide that's on the cutting edge of health science. Many peptide researchers are thinking that CJC1295 can fill a crucial gap in hormone optimization and offer a promising alternative that supports our body Body's regenerative properties without harsh consequences. Join me as we take a deep dive into CJC1295 where I'll be sharing all my research and discoveries on this amazing compound. So before I begin, I must start off with a disclaimer that I'm not a doctor, that all the information in this video is purely for educational and entertainment reasons. Any health concerns you may have or questions, please seek out a licensed profession and do not use this video. Thank you for agreeing. Now let's get straight into this video. So what is CJC1295? Well, it falls into the category of being a GHRH, a growth hormone releasing hormone. It's still a peptide, but this peptide helps the body create and release more growth hormone. Additionally, it stays in the body for six to eight days which is not the case for MODGRF129. CJC1295 contains DAC, drug affinity complex, which is why it can stay in the body for 68 days. So what's the difference between CJC1295 and MODGRF129? And this is a big confusion I see a lot. And pretty much what happened is that CJC1295 became the popular name and now everyone just knows that. Not many people know about MODGRF129, but pretty much, the real name, it's actually the real compound, CJC1295 contains DAC, drug affinity complex, which allows the peptide to stay in the body up to 68 days. ModGRF129, if the real version, just stays in the body for maybe 10 minutes, but it goes up to the receptors, activates them, then leaves, while CJC1295 attaches onto the receptors for multiple days, which you're later gonna learn has stronger effects. But for some reason, I see many people and companies saying they're the same thing, and they'll just say that CJC1295 is just ModGRF129, and then the real CJC1295 is CJC1295 with DAC, which is just confusing. So it's important to clarify that is CJC1295, is that with DAC? which means that is the real compound, or is it without DAC, which is actually ModGRF129. Because ModGRF129 was the initial peptide discovered and created, and then came along CJC1295 with DAC because researchers wanted a stronger response. And now I'll touch on the differences between a GHRP and a GHRH. So a GHRH is a growth hormone releasing hormone, which is what CJC1295 is. And these group of peptides mainly focus on creating more growth hormone. It do help the body release growth hormone, but the main focus is creating growth hormone mostly by working on the pituitary gland. Then the GHRPs, which is a growth hormone releasing peptide, mostly help the body release growth hormone by targeting receptors to release it, such as ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone. And actually when you're hungry, you actually release growth hormone and other receptors to help the body release growth hormone. This is why together a GHRH with a GHRP have such a strong synergistic effect and is why it's commonly paired together in the peptide community. So how does CJC1295 work? Well, it goes up to the pituitary gland and tells the body to create more growth hormone. And sometimes that will be released, but not always, which is why oftentimes these peptides, a GHRH, are paired up with a peptide that helps release growth hormone because it inhibits somostatin. However, though, CJC1295 stays in the body up to six to eight days, meaning that eventually the body will release the growth hormone because CJC is creating growth hormone and then eventually your body will release it, but now there's more to release. And that will keep happening for six to eight days. Well, CJC is like, okay, make more growth hormone, make more growth hormone, your body's making more growth hormone. And eventually it gets released because you have no food in your stomach or whatever happens, and then it continues. However, though, if ModGRF129 is being used, which has a very short half-life, this is why I think it's best to combine with a GHRP to ensure that when the peptide goes up to the pituitary gland to tell your body to create more growth hormone, your body will create it and release it at the same time to have a very strong synergistic effect. I'm not too concerned about CJC because it stays in the body for six to eight days. So short summary, CJC1295 goes up to your pituitary gland and tells the body to create more growth hormone 
and it'll be in your body up to six to eight days or on the receptors telling your body, create growth hormone, create growth hormone, create growth hormone. So what are the research benefits of CJC-1285? Well, it has one main benefit and then has many downstream benefits. And the main benefit is that it helps the body create more growth hormone. I mean, the body is doing the work and with more growth hormone, it's often called the hormone of vitality. This can lead to building more muscle, burning more fat, sleeping better, better immune response, better skin health, and overall helping the body rejuvenate because growth hormone is the hormone of vitality. So what are the research side effects of CJC-1295? As you know, learn, this has more side effects than mod giraffe 129 because it sits in the body up to six to eight days. The first side effects I've studied and seen have been water retention, facial flushing, joint pain, and these are pretty common just with higher levels of growth hormone. Another side effect, which is also could be a benefit depending, is having super physiological levels of growth hormone, which pretty much means levels above healthy ranges, which some people think is a pro, some people think it's a con. Another side effect I've seen is saturation of the receptors or overuse of the receptors, and this is largely because CJC-1285 stays in the body for multiple days. Now let's go into the research dosing and cycling. And I've done a lot of research on this peptide and when I first discovered it, my idea of how to use it has changed until today. So from my opinion, from my research and just my experience, it seems anywhere from one to five MGs a week, which that is a pretty large reference and it largely depends on the individual response. Additionally, it can either be done in large doses, so like one large dose once a week or two large doses twice a week or small injections done every single day. It really depends on the goal. However though, it seems that doing small injections every single day will lead to the strongest response of growth hormone, which is not always a good thing. So pretty much one to five MGs per week as a total dose, and then taking that total amount and splitting it down into whatever is the best response for the individual goal. So let's say for example, I thought two MG twice a week is the best for me. So maybe I do one MG on Monday and one MG on Thursday. Or maybe I'm like, hey, I just wanna do one injection per week. So maybe I do two MGs every Monday. Or let's say I wanna do five injections per week. So then I would do 400 micrograms for five days. I know it's a little confusing. That's one thing you're gonna learn about peptides. There's like a general idea of dosing and cycling, but there's so much room to explore and discover and as well, so much when it comes to individual response. And then for the cycling, I've seen anywhere from six to eight weeks to four to eight weeks off. Personally, I would stick to shorter cycles just to really prevent any saturation of the receptors with longer off cycles. And last note on this is that there will be the highest response from this peptide when taken on an empty stomach because growth hormone can't be released if there's food in the body, specifically carbs and fats. So to summarize dosing and cycling, one to five milligrams per week and that can be done either in one large dose or many small doses taken every single day. It largely depends on the individual response. Cycling anywhere from six to eight weeks on, four to eight weeks off, preferably I stick towards the shorter cycles with this peptide. Now let's go to other peptides I would take with CJC-1285. First would be some kind of GHRP, like ipirelin or a GHRP-6 to help the body release more growth hormone. Next peptide would be IGF-1 LR3. This is an amazing peptide for building muscle, so I would definitely add this in if my main goal was building muscle. Some other peptides to look into could be TB500, BPC-157. Those greatly help just with full body recovery. Another peptide would be PEG-MGF, specifically if I really wanted to focus on muscle recovery because PEG-MGF really shines with muscle recovery. Another peptide I would look into is Kiss Peptin 10, which does many wonderful things at increasing FSH and LH, which help a lot with testosterone. It can really complement growth hormone. And the last, they're not really peptides, but I will be talking more of them on this channel. It's HMG, ACG, and gondorelin. All of those play a major role in the sex loop axis, which can really help increase testosterone, and testosterone can really complement growth hormone. So here are some supplements I would take with CJC-25. First would be some kind of a natural test booster, ideally one that has organs and herbs, because I think growth hormone with testosterone is a powerful combination. Next would be some kind of vitamin D with K2, crucial for good hormonal health. Next would be some kind of DHEA and progesterone, which is something I've actually been playing around a lot with, and small amounts can be super powerful just for having a good HPA axis, and is overall complementing your hormone cycle. 
Next would be DIM, which is an amazing natural herb that helps regulate estrogen because as your body makes more hormones, especially testosterone, it also makes more estrogen. And as a man, you probably don't want that. So DIM is a great way to help balance that out in a natural way. Another noteworthy supplement would be some kind of natural diuretic like dandelion root, because those can help a lot with reducing water retention. And lastly, NAD and glutathione. There's some of my favorite supplements can greatly overall complement your cycle. Now let's go into some lifestyle tools I would add into this. And this is a common thing I've seen with growth hormone peptides and just peptides in general, is that the peptide will load the gun and your lifestyle factor will shoot it. So first, obviously working out and almost my favorite time to actually take growth hormone peptides is actually before a workout in a fasted state. But very important that you're working out, eating health, and doing functional training with an animal-based diet can be very, very powerful for being strong, can be very powerful for packing on muscle and optimizing your hormones naturally. Some other lifestyle tools would be sauna, can be an amazing way to naturally increase growth hormone. Another lifestyle tool is vibration therapy. I love vibration plates. I literally do one almost every single morning. Amazing way to increase growth hormone, but also has many, many other benefits. So definitely look into that. And some other lifestyle tools, especially if you're a man, would be icing your balls, red light therapy on your balls, and as well, magnesium lotion. These are all great way to supercharge your testicles and your testicles are very important for being healthy and as well making more testosterone, which I said many times in this video, testosterone with growth hormone is a very powerful combo. And lastly is HRT, hormone replacement therapy. I think especially combined with CJC25 can really complement someone who is on HRT or wants to get on HRT just to make sure the body is not being suppressed. So what are the pros of CJC1295? The first pro is that it can largely increase growth hormone in the body, even to levels of super physiological levels, if done in a certain way, which is not always a good thing. The second pro is that it can require a few injections per week because it does stay in the body up to six to eight days. So what are the cons of CJC1295? The first con is how long it stays in the body. I personally think it's unnatural, and it is unnatural how long it stays in the body, and that can lead to more side effects such as saturation of the receptors and too much of growth hormone because too much of growth hormone can be a bad thing. So what is my overall opinion of CJC 225? So when I first discovered it, I didn't wanna use it at all because I did not like how it stayed in the receptors for so long. That is why I spent most of my experiments in using ModGRF129, which is the version of this peptide that only goes up to your body for like a couple minutes, activates the receptors and leaves which is actually how it's done naturally in the body. So I have to stick to whatever is natural. However, though, the more research I've done on this peptide, I do think that it can be very powerful if used correctly. So personally, I can see myself using CJC25 for a short period of time, just get a strong increase of growth hormone and then taking a long time off to allow my receptors to reset. So personally, I think it's a great peptide. If for some reason I was not really responding to ModGRF129 or if I had more experience with peptides and I knew how to optimize CJC25 with out overusing my receptors or having the side effects of like water retention and joint pain. So overall, it's a great peptide. It does take more finessing. It does take more experience, but it's definitely a peptide that I need to do a lot more research with. Anyways, if you want to master peptides and overall experience the best quality of life and stay on top of the cutting edge form of health and regenerative medicine, then check out first either my book or Regenerative Academy. I put so much work into it. I'll be building it every single week, every single month, answering all your questions. So if you wanna support my channel, support what I do, either get my book or join my academy. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and stick around for future videos.